Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, we're going to explore one of the four main methods for solving quadratic equations. This particular method is called the square root property, and it only applies for equations that quadratic equations that have a very specific form. And here's what that is. So in the following, if A is a real number, just any real number, the solutions of an equation of this form, and that must be of this form, x squared equal A, A is a number, are given by x equal plus or minus the principal square root of that number A. Now, the thing that makes a quadratic equation quadratic is the existence of an x squared term. So this is a quadratic equation, but it has to be of a specific kind. Now, I want to start with one that's very, very easy that we could really just think about, and I think it'll explain why the solution is going to be what it's going to be. So solve the equation x squared equals 16. If you go way back to first principles of what a variable represents, a variable is really just a placeholder, a box, so to speak, in which you can place a number, and you're looking for what you can put in that box to get a true statement. What number squared would give you 16? And the first one that would jump out to your mind immediately would be the number 4. 4 squared is 16. And 4 is the principal square root of 16. However, that's not the only number you could put in that box. You could also, in that box, put the number negative 4, because negative 4 squared is also 16. So either one of those would work. Now, remember that when we write this symbol, we only mean the principal square root. 16 has two square roots, and here, in fact, they are, 4 and negative 4. But the principal square root is the positive square root. So if I want to get both of the solutions, I have to say that my x is equal to plus or minus, plus or minus, the principal square root of 16. And that would be the one that you really, really want. So what this illustrates is there's really going to be two solutions. X would either be plus or minus 4, and that is, as a solution set, the pair, the, the two numbers, 4 and negative 4. It's not an ordered pair. It's just two numbers. Two values work. Pay attention to the fact that in solving this quadratic equation, we got two solutions. The highest exponent on the X is 2. That's going to be important later in the course where we look at cubic equations where the highest exponent is 3. Guess what? Those have three solutions. Very interesting and something we'll pay close attention to. So that's the square root property. Very, very simple. Uh, if your equation looks like x squared equal number, then the solutions are given by x equal plus or minus the square root of that number. Here's another one. Now, in order to use the square root property, the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that one side is simply x squared and the other side is a number. I can use the principle of balance and subtract 27 from both sides, which would get me in the form x squared equal a number. And then to solve that equation, I could say, well, x is equal to the plus to plus or minus the principal square root of the number on the right, the negative 27, square root of negative 27. Now notice that this is not going to be a real number, but that's okay. We now know about the complex numbers, and I can simplify that radical. Uh, the 27 can be factored into a 9, which is a perfect square a 3, which is what you'd have left over, and a negative 1, which would get the negative sign going. And then if I look at that uh, principal square root of a product as a product of principal square roots, I'd have the principal square root of 9 times the principal square root of 3 times the principal square root of negative 1. And then I can see that that would simplify to 3 times the principal square root of 3. And what's the principal square root of negative 1? I. Remember that uh, we usually put 
the i in front of the radical. That's just to make sure we don't uh, misunderstand that the radical does, does not go over the i. And that represents two numbers, so as a solution set, I would probably write those separately, the positive square root, positive principal square root, and the negative one. And there we go. Let's look at one more. Now, at first glance, this looks a whole lot more complicated, and you might even think, oh, I know what I need to do. I need to multiply out 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1, use my old friend the FOIL rule, and combine all kinds of like terms. But actually, this is in the form that you could use the square root method. You have something or other squared. And basically what the square root method says, that if you want to sort of get rid of the square on one side of an equation, you do that by applying plus or minus the principal square root on the other side. So I can say by the square root method that I get rid of the square on the left by saying plus or minus the square root on the right. The plus or minus is very important. And if I do that, the square is, uh, is gone. And I think I can just look at solving for the x using the principle of balance from here. So if I want to get the x by itself, I would need to subtract that 1. Now, for aesthetic purposes only, I'm going to put the negative 1 in front of the plus or minus principal square root of 18. I can do that. That's the commutative law. And this would give me 3x equals negative 1 plus or minus the principal square root of 18. And then to solve completely for x, I would need to divide both sides by 3. And that would give me x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the principal square root of 18 over 3. Should I simplify the radical? Yeah, I think I should. I think I should just make that a, a, a rule that I always follow. So I look at the 18 and I think of that as nine times two, the principles, uh, excuse me, a perfect square and a leftover. And that will give me, I'll go to another page here, uh, x is equal to negative one plus or minus, so that plus or minus is important, 3, the square root of 9, the principal square root of 9 is 3. Negative 1 plus or minus 3 times the principal square root of 2 over 3. Now you might wonder, can I cancel out those 3's? But the problem is the 3 is supposed to be divided into the entire numerator and the 3 cannot divide into the 1 in the first position, so therefore you can't divide it into the 3 in the second position. Stating this answer as a solution set, I could write this as two separate uh, values, but I think it is also all right just to write that as this, the set containing negative 1 plus or minus 3 times the principal square root of 2 over 3, and that's my solution set.